I mean, I, I remember when when uh, when I worked on the clock, I did a whole lot of looking at the clock. And even now, when I don't necessarily work on the clock, there's a time in my head that says, this is what time I'm supposed to go to the house. <laughs> and there's something about, you know, when, when, when I go home, I, I don't want to think about, you know, I, I, I know I work for CVCC, but when I go to the house, I don't want to think about them. Ain't you glad God ain't saying, you know, at 5 o'clock, I'm punching out. I don't think about you, Jimmy. <laughs> Aren't you glad? I, I, I ain't studying you, Mike, after 5 o'clock. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Some of us, he'd have to work overtime for him, wouldn't he? <laughs> that, that, that's why he, he, he on the, he, he's 24 hours, because he knows. Eight hour shift for some of us. <laughs> oh God. We we thank God. Thank God for his presence in this place. Thank God for for each and every one of you. He is worthy to be praised, isn't he? He's wonderful, God. I love him today. Thankful that he continues to wake us up every morning continues to show us love and extend his mercy to us day after day in spite of us Whew. see that's, that's that's what's powerful because 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 you know people we 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 understand about if somebody does us right I mean, unless something is really wrong with you, you treat people who treat you right, right. But aren't you glad that God doesn't put that stipulation on it? He's God to us even when we're not faithful children to him. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Covenant Christian Church. Good morning, Facebook Live. We are thankful to be here. We're thankful for the presence of the Lord that is here. Um, he is so good. He is so good. And he changes not. He's faithful every day. And I'm glad to be his child. Amen. Amen. Um, this morning, I know you have your Bible, so I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter 16. We're going to read verses 23 through 26. Again, we say good morning um, to each of you. Good morning, Facebook Live. We, we so appreciate um, you being here here and, and being logged in and our prayer this morning is that God will speak to us what it is he would have for us to hear amen amen, amen. Acts chapter 16 beginning at verse number 23 when you have it, say amen. amen. If you're still looking, say oh me. All right. Acts 20, 16, verse 23. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prisons were shaking. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands 
were loosed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. For your hand that is upon each and every one of our lives. Lord, it was you that woke us up this morning. It was you that put in our hearts and our minds, Lord, to either be in your house or to get up and go to our computers and, and, and watch this live stream. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for changing our minds from, from the old mindset that we used to have. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, for, for touching the minds of others. Oh, God, those who haven't come to the real realization of who you are. Oh, God, touch their minds. Oh, God, that they would see the need to cry out to you and to know you for themselves. And Father, we pray that you would use us to be a light and a beacon for you. Oh, God, that the world would see you in us and that you would shine through us and that they would be drawn to you. And Father, we pray that you would just uh, uh, be in our midst today. Oh, God, write the prescription for what is needed, and Lord, you feel it. We thank you, Lord, for Bishop and Pastor Helen. We thank you for your hand and your anointing upon them. We pray for health and strength and wholeness. Oh, God, we anoint our head today. Oh, God, that you would flow through them and that you would encourage and strengthen them in every way. I thank you, God. I thank you for these, your people. Oh, God, those in the room with me and those who are watching uh, via Facebook, I ask you now to touch them to strengthen and bless and encourage them. And whatever their needs are, oh God, you don't only have the answer, you are the answer. And I thank you, Lord, for a release in heaven and a manifestation in earth of those things that you have purposed for your people. God, we honor you and we praise you and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. And this is what I want, for one, verse number 25 is, is what I want to focus on. And the Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. This morning, I want to talk to you from the thought, praising God in a bad place. Praising God in a bad place. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we still have to praise God even in a bad place. Yeah, even in a bad place. Considering all that is going on in our nation, I think that most of us would categorize where we are right now a bad place. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, when, when we think about COVID and, and the racial unrest and, and, and the pro police brutality and the upheaval of, of our nation with the, with the elections and, and all the stuff, the unemployment and, and, and just so much stuff that is going on in our nation, I, I, I feel comfortable with thinking that most people would look at this situation and say, yeah, we're in a bad place right now. Most of us would, would much rather be in, in a different uh, situation than we are in this moment in history. We would much rather be in, in a time where, where, where peop, people were living peaceable and where, where we didn't have to wear masks where we could we could fellowship with our friends and our family like we well, like we normally did it, it would be wonderful to be able to come to God's house and embrace his people like we're accustomed to it would be wonderful to know that we could go out into the community and do all the things that, that we used to do the way we used to do it without having to worry 
about what would happen. And with all the stuff that is going on, it, it, it can be worrisome if we're not careful and we'll, we'll be so focused on it that it destroys and starts to mess with our, our, our minds and our thought processes. I mean, no wonder there's a great concern at, at this time about the mental health of people because of having to be closed in and, and, and isolated. And you couple that, that isolation, and, and you know, because you got folk who, who are sitting at home and they're, they're watching Fox News and they're watching CNN and they're watching all these things. And if you're sitting there, you're locked in and you can't talk to anybody and you're here and all that stuff. It's a difficult place. It's a bad place, if you will. As, as tough as 2020 has been, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that we still have to, we ha have to come to the place that we praise him, even in this bad place. Please understand that just because we're in this place, God has not lost his power. He's still worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. He's still God, and he's still on the throne. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And he's still taking care of his people, and he still has his hand upon us. And for that, ladies and gentlemen, we ought to give him praise and glory and honor. We have to refuse to allow our circumstance to dictate our praise. God, you're still worthy. No matter what is going on, no things aren't going the way we would like them to go. I, we can all admit that. We're not, and we're not, we're not living in the world with blinders on. We're not living in denial. Trying, trying to act like the, the things that's going on in the earth aren't going on. Yeah, yeah. We're in a bad place. But it does not change who's in control. It doesn't change. And he's in control. And he's worthy of all the praise. Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians Chapter 5, verse 18, he said, in everything, give thanks. You know, we're in the Thanksgiving season. And I'm thankful that, 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 that many years ago, somebody had enough wherewithal to say, you know what, as a nation, we need to have a day to be thankful. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that every day should be Thanksgiving. Paul says, in everything, give thanks. Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. <laughs> we must realize that life is going to hand us some things that we won't view as favorable and in life we're going to find ourselves in some things that we don't want to be in but Paul didn't say in good things give thanks he said in everything in everything in COVID give thanks. In racism, give thanks. In, in, in this, this, this election upheaval stuff that we still got to
if Joe Biden actually becomes the president, give thanks. If Donald Trump remains the president, in everything, Because it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change who's in control. God is still worthy. Even in our struggles, even in our hardships, we have to give thanks. You see, because this is what you got to understand. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 45, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And he sendeth rain on the just and on the just, unjust. So, so not only are we going to go through difficult times, the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, that many times the things that we go through, God sends them. I, I know, I know. We, we don't like to think about that. Because we've been conditioned to believe that, that, that the only thing that comes to us from God are, are good things. Well, if the Bible is true, which is this, and Jesus Christ the same, Yesterday, today, and forever. If he is indeed not a respecter of persons, then we got to understand that yes, he sends some difficulties our way. Because we have to go reference the life of Job. <laughs> For the Bible tells me that the sons of God came together and Satan came also. And God asked him, from whence cometh thou? And he said, from walking up and down to and fro. And God said, Say it with me. Say, and God said, Have thou considered my servant Job? If we understand this situation, Satan was wandering aimlessly up and down in the earth. Yes, he had some evil thoughts. Yes, he wanted to do some craziness. But he didn't know where to direct it. But God said, Have you considered my servant Job? Could it be that in the things that we're dealing with, could it have been that God said, have you considered my servant John? <laughs> have you considered my servant Ron? Have you considered my servant Lewis? Have you considered my servant Helen? Have you considered my servant Katie? Have you considered them? We walking around rebuking the devil. <laughs> God is saying, how long have I been with them that they don't know me? <laughs> J 
just maybe, just maybe, God is testing us to see if we have the same heart that Job had. For after Job lost all of the stuff, I heard Job say, naked came I out from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord giveth, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed, 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 blessed be the name of the Lord. In other words, he said, yeah, God, I recognize that it was you that allowed this to come upon me. But even in a bad place, I choose to praise you. I won't turn back. I won't give up. I praise you even in a bad place. Praise you, even in a bad place. I won't allow my present circumstances to keep me from giving you glory and honor and praise because in spite of what I'm going through, you are still God, and you're still worthy. And we must understand is that we, we, we should not allow our, our circumstances to affect our praise but our praise should affect our circumstances oh yeah 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 for the bible says in psalms chapter 22 verse 3 it says that he inhabits the praises of his people and psalms chapter 16 verse 11 says in thy presence is fullness of joy. No, 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 no. If he inhabits the praise of his people, then that means he comes and sits down in them. He, he makes it his, his residence. Yeah, yeah. Wherever there's praise, Jesus, God is there. Ah, he said he, he inhabits the praises of his people. However, it also says that in his presence, or in other words, wherever he is, <laughs> it's not just happiness. Because happiness is contingent upon what is happening. But in his presence is, is joy, unspeakable, full of glory, joy. I'm talking about fullness of joy. Said is its presence. So then, so then, so then. If I will commit myself to praising him, even in a bad place, he shows up. And then in spite of what's happening, I still got joy. <sighs> Yes, we're dealing with COVID. Yes, it appears that our nation is in upheaval. But as I said, God is still in control and still worthy of our praise. David said in Psalms 31, 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. 
his praise shall continually be in my mouth. In other words, in the good times, I'll praise you. In the bad times, I'll praise you. When there's money in my pocket, I'll praise you. But when there's no money in my pocket, I'm still going to praise you. When my family is getting along well, I, I praise you. But even when we can't even stand each other, I'm still going to praise you. Good God Almighty, when uh, my health uh, is in good place, I, I praise you. But even if my health uh, begins to fail me, God, I'm still going to praise you. It doesn't change uh, who you are. You're worthy. And I choose to praise you in spite of my circumstances. As we look at this text, we find that Paul and Silas have been thrown into prison. And they're in prison for doing God's work. <laughs> and I know, I know, I know, I know that that doesn't make sense to us because we've been conditioned to believe that if we do what God wants us to do, everything is going to be good. But I wonder is there anybody here other than me who has ever looked at your life and said, God, I'm trying to live all I know to live. I'm trying to be faithful to you. I go where you tell me to go. I say what you tell me to say. But God, for some reason, the life that I'm trying to live and what I'm getting in return do doesn't seem to be matching up, at least according to what I thought it should look like. Paul and Silas are in prison. And for many folk, if your, if your motives aren't right, If the reward doesn't match the, 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 the work, no. come on, think about it. Even on your job, let, let them not be paying you to, what you think you're worth. Uh huh. It, it won't be too long, you're going to give them the friendly twos. A mighty 5,000. And how many times have folk looked at their life? And, and it's amazing how we really only look at it closely when it seems like we're giving more than we're getting. We don't pay attention to when we're getting more than we get. <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. Let's be honest. You know, when, when, when God given us more than we know we deserve, when it's evident to us, because the reality he always is, but sometimes it's not evident to us. But then sometimes it's really evident that God is blessing you far better than you lived in. But we don't ever question God on that. We don't be saying, God, I don't deserve this. No, Lord, no, you just take this back. I ain't by myself, I know. <laughs> mm-hmm. There they are. They're in prison. And not only are they in prison, they go to the end of prison. 
Many of you heard me talk about the inner prison. And let's just say that the inner prison was, to say the least, an inhumane situation. The inner prison was the worst part of the prison. So they weren't only in a bad place. Because to be in prison would have been to, would have been to be in a bad place. They, they weren't just in a bad place. But they were in the worst place possible. But the Bible doesn't tell us anything about Paul and Silas complaining or griping or questioning God. They're in this horrible situation. Yet, from the belly, the deepest, ugliest, nasty part of the prison, emerges a sound. A sound that is unfamiliar to the prisoners. This is not something that they've heard before. They are used to hearing cursing, nastiness, and foul. They're used to hearing all of that. But now, coming out of the belly of this prison, is a prayer. And this is Paul's way. For he says in Philippians 4.11, I've, I've learned to be content. <laughs> In whatever state I'm in, he's there. So he's given praise to God. His praise is Bellowing up through all the corridors of the prison. A praise, a sound. Again, that it's it's unfamiliar. But yet life changes. And ladies and gentlemen. What I want you to get is that there are people who are paying attention. See, one of the things that no doubt was shocking to, to these prisoners is that they knew that Paul and Silas was in a worse situation than them. Uh-oh. Paul, Paul and Silas, they, could, no doubt they'd have conversation. Because to be in the inner prison would, would be, I, I guess we could compare it if, if, if there's, could we compare it to being in SAG in today's prison. It, it, it is not a real comparison because we couldn't even compare today's prison system to what they were dealing with then. But if we were going to parallel it. And now, just like the, there are conversations in, in today's prison uh, between the, the, the inmates of, uh, you don't want to go to SIG. And let me, let me do everything that I can, can do to, to keep from going to SIG. 
um, no doubt these prisoners had heard about the inner prison. And they're saying, ah, whatever you do, you don't, you don't want to go to the inner prison. So they knew that Paul and Silas were in worse situation than them. But yet, they're not hearing any complaining. I wonder, and you don't have to raise your hand, but I wonder, is there anybody here who has allowed someone in worse shape than you to offer a better praise than you? How many times have we become so engulfed in our own little issues that we fail to even consider all of those who are in much worse shape than we are? Here Paul and Silas was. They were in the worst possible situation they could be in. But yet, they had a praise. And if we could learn anything from them, is that, yeah, we may be going through. Our situation may be bad. But if we be honest, there is somebody. And if they can praise him in a worse place, surely we can praise him in a bad place. <sighs> what you have to come to place, what, what, what will help you Keep your praise is understanding that if God is indeed in control, his promise to us is that he works everything according to Romans 8.28. He works everything for our good. So if God is working even COVID, this, this stuff that's going on, if he is working all these things for our good, then why are we complaining? And instead of pray, praising. You know what I'm saying? It, why? Why in the world would we waste any time and energy complaining and griping if God is indeed working it for our good. The only reason that we would be complaining is if somehow we don't believe. Paul believed that somehow, even though he may not have understood God, you're working this for my benefit. So even in this bad place, I'm going to praise you. I'm about to close, but several years ago, I, I, I can't remember. It may have been a couple years ago when I was writing this. Uh, Sister Mamie, you came to my mind. Because I remember a couple of years ago when you were diagnosed with cancer. The way you handled it reminded me of Paul and Silas. Because I never heard a complaint. She only praised. She only, in the midst of her bad place. When others would have looked at their life and said, God, I've been faithful to do this. 
I've served you and I've done this. She chose to praise him. Paul and Silas's decision to praise God rather than complain and gripe produced something in the atmosphere. For the Bible says, and suddenly, there was an earthquake. And everyone's, not just Paul and Silas, but those who heard, those who knew, wait a minute, they're in a worse situation than I am, but yet they're praising him. Everyone's bands was loose. And all the doors came open. And I'm telling you that these men's lives were changed in a deep way. They, 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 they just didn't get a, 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 a happy feeling and, and, you know, goosebumps. No, 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 no. They had li a life-changing moment. How do you know they had a life-changing moment? Because in the morning, when the guard came, and he saw all the doors open, the Bible says that the God was ready to fall on the sword. But Paul said, hey, do yourself no harm. We're all. Had they not had a character change, when them chains fell off and that door flew open, What? Flash couldn't have caught him. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say to you, what I'm trying to say to you is if in a bad place, in a bad place, if we will choose to praise him, I'm convinced that we can provoke change to take place in the lives of those who are listening and watching. All we have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is commit ourselves to praising God, even in a bad place. Amen. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for his presence. We thank God for his word. You know, I thank God that the word is, is in my heart, not just in my head. This morning in my office as I was trying to do some last minute touch-ups, I was going to um, make the font bigger on all my notes. And somehow I hit the wrong button and deleted the whole message. <laughs> and had no way to retrieve it. I said, all right, God. <laughs> what you going to do? <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Hey, what what hey, what you gonna do? It's ain't on me. God has a plan. And I chose to praise him even in a bad place. <laughs> Even in a bad place. Facebook, we, we thank God for you. And we pray that something said today. Yeah, you may be in a bad place. But I want to encourage you to keep on praising him. Even in this place. He loves you. He has a plan for your life. When the dust settles and the smoke clears, if you will stay committed to praising him, I'm telling you, you're going to come out in a good place. We, again, pray that something has said, that's been said has been a blessing to your life. And if you would like to give to this ministry, there's a button um, on the page that you can go to our website, via uh, PayPal. We appreciate you. For those of you who have been sending in funds, we, we say thank you. We certainly don't take it for granted. Um, we, we appreciate you and we love you. For those of you here in the house, thank you. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you for your, for, for your love that you continue to show and your faithfulness to the work of God. Um, we can't do what, what we do with, except you be faithful to do what you do. We love you and we appreciate you. We're going to go to God in prayer. If you would, would you stand? Um, do we have any prayer requests? If you don't, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. God is able. Yes. Francis, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, Pastor Helen. Facebook, if, if, if they're still on, if you have prayer requests, just put it in the, in the, in the notes and we'll be praying for you as well. Um, how many of you know that God hears all and he knows all? And he's still able. He's still able. He, he's still in the healing business. He's still delivering. He's, he's still working on our behalf. He hadn't lost any power. And he, he cares about us. He told us to cast all our cares upon him. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, you, you heard every prayer request. And God, we send your word to each and every one of those individuals. And we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would move on their behalf. Whatever is needed, God, we ask, God, that you would show yourself mighty. Oh, God, bring healing. Bring comfort. Bring peace. Guide the hands of doctors, God. 
Give wisdom to them as they, as they work on your people, God. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for traveling grace, for your hedge of protection being around us, God. We thank you, Lord, for, for touching each and every one of these, your people, God. You see and you know, God. Move on their behalf, God. Touch every portion of their body every part of their being. Bring comfort to those who are facing bereavement. Whatever the situations are, God, we lift them up before you and we invite you in to every situation of our lives. God, we lean and we, tend, we depend and we trust in you. And the Lord, we thank you. We thank you in, adv in advance for manifesting in the lives of these, your people, those things, Lord, that they've requested. God, we honor you. And Father, even in a bad place, we choose to praise you. God, we refuse to allow our circumstance to hinder our praise. We love you, God. We magnify your blessed name. In Jesus' name, amen.